Good day, everybody. We're back in the garage. Um, we got some work to do. <laughs> well, I do. You guys got some watching to do. Um, we're doing a whole front end uh, rebuild on this. Um, let me tell you what we're doing. So, this has uh, TTB axles in it that I got from an 89 Bronco. And everything's original on this axle. And what? What? What, both of you are talking? Huh? Cats. Shop cats. Don't you get up on that table. Kitty. <laughs> so squeaky. Okay, anyways. Anyways, this has original everything um, on the axles. Um, so, the ball joints are pretty much done. Yeah. So, Oh, and I've been driving it like this too, with blown ball joints. Um, we have uh, some tie rod issues. Um, they're kind of, well, well, one of them's blown out. Um, and the shocks are pretty much toast. So, uh, also, oh yeah, front sway bar bushings. We're doing those too. Now, I bought pretty much all of the good stuff you can get for this, uh, this deal without, you know, going and doing anything crazy. I've got Bilstein shocks for the front all Moog steering components and then I even have a, um, adjustable camber caster bushings. These are from uh, Superlift. And then energy suspension uh, bushings. Now the only bushings that we're not going to be replacing are the uh, uh, pivot bushings for the beams. I did those when I put the axles in and I used uh, energy suspension uh, bushings for that too. And they've been holding up pretty good. Um, this thing's not lifted, it's uh, still technically a two-wheel drive ride height and we're not changing that at all, so everything's all kind of nice and flat in there, surprisingly, so. Okay. Oh, looks like we got some wormage here. It's just wet. Okay, so I'll look on these brakes here. I haven't, uh looked at them since I put them on. Yeah, we're gonna have to, we're gonna be pulling all this apart to get our axle out. What do we need to get that off? Uh, probably a 13 maybe? Oh, a 916 fit? Yep. Do I need that long of one? Nope. Can I just force it. Oh, that's just done. Yeah, get on there. We'll just force it on there. Actually, I need to get a jack under this axle. Yep, these are old Monroes. Don't know how long these have been on here. I'm guessing they've probably been on this truck for, you know, maybe a decade and a half. Pretty easy though. Yeah, I've been on there a minute. <clears throat> Look at that, I'm just. <laughs> yeah, they're toast. They're toast. Of course, that nut goes flying all the way under the center of the truck. Yeah. yeah, look, that, it's got, you know, okay rebound, but it's, she's toast. Made in Belgium. Oh, we have, uh, still gonna have European shocks in here. That's nice. This feels a lot lighter. Well, this is a mono tube, so it's gonna have less stuff in there. I think I know. You know what? I know why they made it this way because there's there's less unsprung weight here, you know. Tunage. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, these sway bar bushings are not all that happy. I think we'll probably end up doing that next. Do here. We've got so these bushings, 
go in a certain way. You have that little stick up there. That goes into the spring bucket. Don't put it the other way around. Because this piece here just keeps the shock centered. If you want to do it the wrong way, you go right ahead. Actually, might need to tighten that up when we get the suspension compressed. is I'll tighten it until the stud pushes this off. And basically all we really need to do is just tighten these bushings to their snug. We don't want to compress them too much because you could end up splitting them. I think right now they got a good tension on them. So I want to call that good. You can sort of tune these shocks just by how uh, loose or tight you put this upper bushing. So yeah, I think we're good. Gotta come off. So we'll get our hammer here. Start knocking that through. Gonna need a bunch of later. But by forgot to order new uh, retainers. They seem fine. They seem fine. Get off of there. And then I'll hang out with your buddy old Bill in there. I spent like 10 minutes trying to figure out what size this was. I couldn't get standard or metric to fit and finally I tried again with the standard. And it was like, oh yeah, nope, it was standard. Well, I will say I am thankful I at least have some kind of garage to work in because normally I work outside, and, but today is just one of those Oregon days where it's non-stop rain, just non-stop. In fact, our water level has gone up so high just in two days of rain, it's kind of got me worried. We got kind of a big uh, weather system just rolled through wind and excessive <coughs> rain. Meow. Meow. Kikiri. Meow. What you doing? What you doing, little puma? Are you bored? You are? It's got the whole outside to do so. Oh, it's raining. I see. Did we get all this rain? Do I gotta like, oh, conveniently I have this. Yeah, we might clean that o-ring up a little bit there. So now I need... Oh yeah, my snap ring pliers. We'll need those. Does that fit? I think that's too big. Dang it! I'm gonna do this the wrong way here. <laughs> that was easy, okay. 
Now, I have this other flathead screwdriver that I like to use, but of course, you know, I don't know where it's at. <clears throat> but I have these dental picks, and they work like a charm. So now the hub later here. Take that out. What I don't like is look at look at the grease. Does that look a little sketchy to you? Actually, think I slapped this stuff together and didn't even grease it at all. And I've been driving this thing. I kind of had some like zero like care for some of the stuff on this truck. I just literally just slapped it together with stuff that I had or got for cheap off of marketplace. Oh, so you're gonna do that, huh? Oh. Ooh. <laughs> oh boy. What time does Napa close? Okay. Thankfully, Napa stocks um, wheel bearings uh, for this setup. So I got new inners and outers. Um, and uh, new seals. So. We'll be able to put this pig back together in a little bit later. Salt belt truck, and it's like, no, nope, not coming to pit. I'm not coming to park. You're never gonna get me. Never, and never gonna get me there. Now we got a nice little slip hazard here. Oh, come on, no. We're gonna have to brake clean that. I don't want to. Yeah, I need needle bearings too. Fuck that. We need to do some cleaning. I don't think I... Took this apart. Oh, what, now you don't want to come off? I want you, I, I think I'm just taking these off. 
Where is my oh here it is. Oh yeah, we never did have this before. Are we going to leak ear lube? Take this out. Okay, oh man, that, that's looking a little angry. So here's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna grab a socket here from our kit way over here gee is it a 1360 yep come on get that and then i would get you guys in closer but you know I don't really feel like buying another camera. The lower ball joint felt, feels good, but this upper one is pretty well trashed. Now, we're gonna have a lot of fun getting this out. And yeah, I've been driving this thing without a cotter key. Oh boy. Should we start from this way? Cause we can put our body weight into it. push up against the frame. Good oh boy. <clears throat> oh, that's... <laughs> All right, we got something. It's not map gas. I know someone's gonna say, oh, you should get map gas. I can't get map gas right now. Every time I go and find it, the stores that normally have it don't have it. This is better than nothing. Get a nice little fire going in here. Comfortable position here. Yeah, we get just smoking real good. Quench it with that. We're just gonna give it a few cycles. You know, catch it on fire. Let it. Let it. You know. Let it cook. Get a little bit of heat in this area, you know? And then we'll take our chisale here and we'll just give her a, give her a little, you know, shock and awe here. This also ends up just, you know, cleaning up all the dirt in there and, you know, it just gets this nasty paint that some guy high on crack put on. I don't know. Wait, nope, can't do that. Oh yeah! <laughs> see? You see? Oh yeah, all we needed was that heat right there. I think get just that heat and then quenching it with the uh, penetrating oil really did the trick. Yeah, that that really helped. You need to get on there. Now, what you do, 
Um, actually, I'm going to go ahead and take that nut all the way off. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get a little thing of steel uh, that I have. I'm going to put it right here just to protect this bushing and our new shock that we could have waited to put in. I'm thinking for this area, if we need to heat that up again, we can just spray that down with um, this. In fact, I'm going to do that right now. I'm just going to, I'm going to hose it down. Just unload this can. And then what we'll do is we'll light that on fire. Uh, and it will heat up that area. Try and get in here with the hammer and give her some taps. In fact, we can, well, we'll do that when we light it on fire. And then this one here, we'll heat it up as well and we'll just kashwing. And one thing I would like to do is actually get this jack back up to right height and put my angle finder on the top here and kind of see where it's at for, um, uh, um, caster and I'd like to know where it's at for uh, camera as well in fact let's do that right now jack it up until it comes off the stand we can at least get it close I am going to take this in for a steering alignment this thing has Six degrees of caster right now, just how the truck sits. So that means we probably have like uh, three or four degrees of caster, which I would like to get some more out of it. I would like to have six degrees of caster. This thing will just drive straight like an arrow. So what do we got for... Camber, we're about one degree, one or two degrees cambered in. So the top of the tire is actually um, cambered in. So I think what we put that bushing in here, what we'll do is we'll set it so that it's, we have, just like it sits right here, this thing will stop moving. Uh, it's reading about six degrees caster. So what we'll do is we'll set up so it has that amount, maybe a smidge more. And then when we set up our camber, we'll get it so that our... We'll set it up so that this is read zero. So I think that's going to be our game plan for just setting the camber caster. And it'll be close enough to where when we take it, we can drive it safely to the uh, alignment shop. Now we'll use the jack and put a little bit of tension on it. Um, because when we hammer on this, we don't want to be yanking on the shock. In fact, what we could do is actually put a floor jack under here. We can jack the uh, pumpkin up over here. And then we can put one of our jack stands here, and that will um, make it solid to the floor. So remember, tubes, we have uh, about your negative three degrees camber, and then we were um, six degrees caster. little bonfire going here. Let's just turn the lights off and snuggle up. No. Look at that. That thing's jumping out of there.
This is a leap song I go. I'll sing it low for no. Be happy. Something, something. I haven't done ball joints in a long time. I think we want to do something like this. And then we'll put I need a uh, receptacle here that fits over that. And then we have this piece here that will do one of those. And then we'll thread this in until we touch and then we'll just do it do get in. And I think what we have to do is we need to um, I think we have to put the bottom one in first because this will get flipped around when it presses the new one in. So we'll put the new bottom one in first and then we'll and then we'll do this. And I got this thing. I need to flip it around here. I got this thing a long time ago when I first started doing uh, car work. I, I think I got had to do ball joints in my Explorer. I don't normally do ball joints. It's kind of like doing U-joints sometimes. Okay. We'll put tension on it. And then we'll get our fire maker here. I want to get a little bit of heat on there. Kind of straight. Yep. Whoa, where'd you go oh, there? I feel like my grandfather. Oh, you. that just loosely started and then boom look at that we got some brand new moogulators so this needs to go in there and I think we can give her just a little bit of a tippy tip tap She's in. Grease boot here. Do we have any instructions here? I don't know. So the grease boot, or the dust boot, has a little slot here for grease to come out. And it says to, oh, right here, mount inboard. So that means you want to put your boot, like, right here. You want this going away from your uh, brakes, basically. And it just snaps on like that. Should make the ball joint straight. That's so cool. Look, that's just trippy, man. I like that. Okay, so this is a little fiddly. Um, I set it, set that bushing until, um, basically I put the bushing so everything was centered instead of being all off. 
I had too much of an angle on that ball joint um, that it was kind of binding this up a little bit. So I set it to zero, and what we'll do is we'll let the alignment tech mess with that. So where are we at for caster? We're still sitting pretty good for caster. And camber, actually camber's pretty good. We're out on the camber. Actually where I wanted it to be. Um, I think this, um, you only snug this to a certain amount. In fact, I'm gonna get it to where I can just see the um, cotter split pin hole. There we go, and then I'm moving this around. You do want, this has to have some preload on it. And I'm just moving this around, and then I'm kinda tap on it, just make sure nothing's bound up. Feels pretty good, it's nice and tight. We don't want this too tight because what'll happen is you'll get memory steering. You do not want that. All right, tubes. Spent a little bit of time farting around putting uh, new bearings in. I had a problem with the seal. The new one is nothing like the old one. It does not fit at all. So I'll have to find another seal. Um, otherwise I had to reuse the one that's in here and it like just slides on. It's probably not a good thing. But before I start putting this all back together, I want to show you guys something. Now someone once upon a time said that if you leave your hubs locked in all the time, it's going to wear them out. Well, let me learn on you here for a second. So, we got the hubs unlocked. We're rolling down the road. The piece that's spline on this axle is stationary. You see? Because the axle's not locked in. So, hear me out now. When we lock this, when you turn your hub in, it pushes on that, this uh, collar. When it pushes on that, it locks into this piece here, which is splined to the shaft. So now when you're turning, everything's turning together. Nothing's, you know, sliding on each other anymore. So what I'm trying to figure out is how does leaving the hubs locked in wear them out? I mean, really, come on. Having them unlocked like this uh, puts a little bit of load on the end here because when you're, when you move the steering, the resistance in the U-joint causes this to kind of just move around a little bit. Whatever clearance is in this, this will move around to an extent. So I just wanted to point that out. So if someone ever says to you, oh, you're gonna wear your hubs out if you leave them locked in, I go, well, actually, it's, if you leave them unlocked, you're gonna wear them out. <laughs> so that's a little thing. Um, I've got this. I tightened this down to where it kind of felt like, uh, like it was turning in honey. been noticing this piece looks it looks off so I don't know what's going on but those mile markers are not fitting anymore um yeah I'm completely stumped oh tubes I'm tired I'm about I'm about ready to call her a day okay there's just so much gook here Wow, there's just like this grease. You always gotta bust your, you know, finger on something, you know? Always. If you're not busting knuckles or you know, are you really 
Are you, are you really working? Oh, this thing was just caked. I think so. How's yours, dude? Come on, greasy nonsense. I love this torch. Throw a little bit of heat, you know. Try not to get the grease on you. Finally. There's our steering links. Probably my least favorite um design but you know whatever um so basically what i want to do is i'm gonna get the new stuff kind of lay it out and then what we'll do is we want to measure from the center of this link to the center of this link and then what we'll do is we'll uh, write down what we have for a length and then we'll do the same for this one we'll measure from the center of this tie rod to the center of that one and then we'll set up our new links uh, to that length and then this thing's already got a bad alignment anyway so it, as long as it will drive halfway decent to the alignment shop that's all we need to do so um yeah the only thing we will have to do is we do need to take we need these uh collars i uh didn't buy new ones should have just bought all new like completely all new but i didn't sue me so there's two tie rod ends here this is the left hand so this will be our driver side Yep, it's our driver's side. Now I can tell this thing already with having new ball joints on that one side, this thing is going to be nice and tight. Which is weird because I've never had one of these trucks with tight steering. And then this should be our RT. Right side. Looks like it matches. So we got that. have this and then we got this guy right here this can get we can bolt this one up right now And then we'll take these apart, knock them off, and yeah. All Moog stuff, man. This thing's just. We're gonna kill the gambler. Hell yeah. Now. I guess there's a controversy, controversy, yeah, about how these go on. Here's what I do. 
It needs to go in the hole. And then something like that. And I'm going to take the end. I'm going to bend it over. And then I'm going to take this end. I'm going to bend it over. I'm going to take a really large sledgehammer and just, you know, tap it over. Look at that. That is absolutely beautiful, I think. Yep. This stuff here, I love this stuff. I mean, it's schlick. I think I got it at Home Depot or something. I'm gonna have to go get some more. So if we're lucky, I'll someday clean my garage. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Someone was using that red grease with that. I don't like the red grease. Someone was using the red grease with this. I don't know if it makes a difference, but I like to use the uh, um, this stuff. I don't like the the red has a weird smell to it, and I just don't care for it. So I use the the uh, something Molly fortified, what you might call it. Pretty good stuff. I've never had. I've had. I've never had anything go out using. That grease, it's lasted for a long time. Yeah, these things are old, man. Hopefully with having Bilstein shocks, the suspension um, won't, uh, it won't be such a, uh, it won't be cycling excessively. And you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to uh, measure this one. Great. Whatever. So, I think what I'll do first is <clears throat> Well, what's going on here? What's your problem? Just snug those up. Don't be looking at my belly. Up -do -do. These got to be fairly tight. Actually, this side, since I don't have a drive shaft or exhaust here, I'm 
do her that way. Scott, if you're watching, I really appreciate these pry bars. They're better than the Craftsman ones I have, and I have a soft spot for the Craftsman stuff, but those are even better. They're just awesome. I think about the e-brake cable will go behind the shock later next time. Okay. Bye-bye, air shock. can actually get this nylon line out of here. Surprised we didn't spring any leaks. Okay. New Bilstein. Coming right up. So I'm wondering. shift this cable over. Yeah, we can. That'll work for me. I always hate getting these dirty because they're so nice looking. Let's see. Can we catch a couple threads? Oh, yeah. Now we'll just draw it on there. This is why we throw a little bit of lube on it. I have nothing to push against. I think we can just do that. Oh. Why? Snug. This thing is gonna ride so nice. Cool. We got airbags. We got that. I gotta eat something. Uh, yeah. I'm done. <laughs> Tubes, that's it for this video. Um, I am going to do the other side off camera, uh, which now that side's just the shock and the ball joints and the wheel bearings. Um, I've got to go to back to Napa and get a different seal. Um, I'm actually going to look at the seals and see what different ones they have. I know what I need now. Pretty sure this other side's going to need it. And if that side is different for whatever reason, I have a seal for that. So, anyways. Um, ball joints and shock on the driver's side, the steering links, those are all new now, so we should have nice tight suspension and steering. Um, uh, the next video um, coming up is going to be the uh, onboard air install. Um, I'm kind of waiting for some better weather to, to finish that up. I already started working on it, got some of it kind of set up, but I'm waiting for some better weather because um, I need to work outside to have room for running harnesses and stuff because I only have the one car garage so yeah but anyways 
that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching and supporting the channel. I hope you guys uh, like this uh, these series of videos. Um, really looking forward to doing the Gambler 500 this this year, and that's why I'm putting so much money into this uh, just to get it so that we can you know have it mostly reliable. Um, tomorrow, I'm I'm picking up the drive shaft. And so we're going to do a little video on that and maybe take this thing for a test drive. Um, I've also got new hubs on the way. I don't know why these ones aren't working. I might, I'll come back to it tomorrow. And, uh, well, okay, I lied. I haven't ordered them yet, but I, I will. But I'm going to come back tomorrow and look at that hub and see why it's not fitting all of a sudden. And if I get it to fit, then I won't order hubs. But otherwise, it's looking like I'm going to have to order hubs for whatever reason. Um, so, yeah, anyways, I'm going to put this thing back on the ground, scooch it back out into the wet, nasty outside, and I'm uh, going to go make some food. In fact, I'm actually going to clean up here and get something, one of my things going, so, yeah. All right, that's it.